Happy New Year, everybody. It's uh, uh, Welcome to ISACA Live. I'm David Samuelson, ISACA CEO, and I'm so excited to be here with uh, our board chair, Greg Tuhill. Greg, do you want to introduce yourself? And Hey, before- thank you, David, and uh, greetings, everybody. I uh, hope that you all had a happy new year, and uh, we're looking forward to having this conversation with you today. I'm Greg Tuhill, the chair of the ISACA Board of Directors. Uh, I've been a longtime member of ISACA. I maintain my CISM in addition to my CISSP as well, because I'm a cyber guy. And uh, my day job, I'm the director of the CERT at Carnegie Mellon University Software Engineering Institute. And as you may be uh, seeing behind me, uh, I'm a retired US Air Force officer. And uh, previous jobs took me to uh, places like uh, DHS, where I was the Deputy Assistant Secretary for Cyber and Communications, and I concluded my federal career as the first Chief Information Security Officer of the United States government. And today, David and I are really looking forward to talking to you and with you about digital trust. David, back to you. Yeah, we want to share a little bit about our our strategy, and it's it's exciting because we have the opportunity to talk about some of the things that Greg and I and the board have been talking about and the management team. Um, we want to be, uh, ISACA to be the authority in d- digital trust and be the member association for digital trust everywhere. And when I hear the term digital trust, I think of ISACA. It's, it's, our, it's in our DNA. It's been who we are for the last 50 years. Uh, but Greg, what do you think of when you think of uh, digital trust? You know, when we talk about digital trust, I don't think there's any one singular definition that is definitive around the world. But ultimately, I view digital trust as having confidence in the ability to uh, create a more secure cyber ecosystem, that digital world in which we all live in. And that includes making sure that you have the right people in place with the right skills and training and discipline. You have the right technology in place to secure that information, maintain the confidentiality, integrity, and availability of that information. And then the processes in place to make sure that uh, that information, that data that's out there is only used and seen by those who have a need to see it, uh, that you maintain that integrity and uh, and you maintain things like privacy as well. Digital trust is all about confidence that users would have in the ability of people, technology, and processes to better deliver a more secure digital ecosystem. That's right. And I think, you know, ISAC is unique because all of the professions that we serve, whether it's assurance or risk or IT governance and security, as you mentioned, um, they they all have a role to play. And it's partly why we have this, this idea that we want to protect and make sure and ensure the positive potential of technology at ISACA. So we're very excited. We have some thoughts and ideas about how we can in, you know, continue to build all of us as a digital trust uh, professionals around the world. Um, but we also are around the world. And I, I think another very important discussion we've been having, Greg, is around our global impact. We need to be the same for members no matter where you are in the world. And and Greg and I believe very strongly in this. And it's for me, I've expressed it as the first mile and the last mile of delivering ISACA's relevance and value and trust around the world. And um, But Greg, what are your thoughts about this, you know, being as global is a a big responsibility. But let's face it, you know, from a global community standpoint, just looking at everybody from all sorts of different parts of the world coming together today, we're all, you know, together here, about 20 different countries are represented in today's call. And that's emblematic of the cyber ecosystem that we have now. This uh, digital ecosystem is truly globally connected. A prime example are our financial systems. You know, we're able to go around the world in in just microseconds with the ability of the different technologies that we have. Our telecommunications is globally connected as exemplified by today's uh, conference call. And when I take a look at digital trust and the global effort that we are trying to put in, 
to identify those best practices and bring our community to better together and to do things better together. Nobody has a monopoly on best practices. It's really a community effort and we all have a stake in global digital trust, David. That's right. You know, I love these ISACA lives because it is this moment where everybody comes into this virtual room and technology really helps us stay connected in in ways that, you know, some of the travel that you you mentioned, uh, Greg, we, we're not allowed to do anymore. So I'm really, uh, really excited that we can be together. Another area that we've been focusing on for a few years now is around the next generation. So you can think of ISACA having impact on our current, you know, professionals around the world and, and, the, and the global impact. And But we need new digital trust professionals to enter the workforce. And there's a skills gap that we as an association are trying to help close by certifications and learning and activities that make all of us better at what we do at our jobs. And, you know, I feel so lucky that we have someone of Greg's caliber leading our board and also leading cert, you know, because this is a time of unprecedented need for digital trust professionals. And um, so can you talk about some of the areas that you feel that we need to focus on in the next generation of professionals, Greg? Yeah, thank you, David. You know, we've got so many different areas uh, that we're tackling uh, here at ISACA. But, you know, as we take a look at the, uh, the needs that are out there, uh, let's, let's start with your initial comment, where the fact is that we've got a, an ecosystem right now that is increasingly is reliant on information technology to link us all together. And, and there's a significant workforce gap out there where, uh, in, for example, my discipline, the cybersecurity discipline, there's reports that the world has about 3 million different jobs in the cybersecurity world that are unfilled. And, you know, each job that's not filled uh, presents risk to those organizations. But for our ISACA members, uh, and, and folks who are looking to get into the digital trust space, it provides outstanding opportunities, particularly as we see continued growth in, in the IT and uh, digital trust infrastructure. I think as we also take a look at what the demands are right now with uh, initiatives such as what we're seeing with privacy regulations, with uh, the cybersecurity regulations and uh, risk uh, resilience issues that are out there. There's plenty of opportunities for the younger generation to step up because using the US government as an example, um, a, approximately 65% of US government IT and cyber professionals are eligible to retire in the next three years. So, you know, there's some great opportunities, um, not only you know with U.S. government, but around the world, for the next generation to step up, and, and not only step up, but to leapfrog forward. So that's why you know I'm really excited about some of the things that we're doing at ISACA to up our game and provide improved content, better information sharing, and also to to help our ISACA members be prepared not only to excel today, but to lead and excel tomorrow. Yeah, we've very much, as you know, Greg, been focusing on becoming more modern. You know, as a 50-year-old organization, we had some work to do to modernize our, our technology, which serves members, serves that content up, you know, indexes that body of knowledge so that we can find it easily. Those are all member benefit things that we're really very focused on to try to improve. And we've we've kind of gotten over a hump this year to start to accelerate some of that. One of the things that ISACA membership uh, allows is uh, the volunteer opportunities that um, that we're so active with. And one of the ways that ISACA members are active is through, you know, chapter leadership. And we also have a volunteer board of directors and we've just opened, our, we've had our nominations for the next term uh, open for a while. And I'd like to let you know that they're gonna be open through the end of this month. 
And I was going to ask Greg to share some of your thoughts about how new members are selected and and what it's like to serve on the ISACA board. It's not the same as being a, a chapter leader. It's a, it's a bit higher level up or a step above that. But can you talk a little bit about what we're trying to achieve with our member search? Yeah, thanks so much. Uh, you know, it, as a board of director member, uh, you know, I, I volunteer to, uh, to serve uh, our broader community here at ISACA as a member of the board of directors. I don't get paid. None of our directors get paid. We're all volunteers. And what we're looking for uh, with our board is, is we want a board that has got the skills to best serve you, our fellow members. And we aim to strike a balance to assure that all geographic areas and skills are well represented. Uh, I've often been on uh, Zoom calls, team chats, and other uh, media platforms where I've interacted with my fellow members and uh, folks say, hey, Greg, you know, I, I aspire to be on the board someday, but I'm not sure, you know, I've got all the right skills yet. And you know, what we're looking for uh, with the board members um, are, are folks that are very um, uh, accomplished in their profession, are dedicated to ISACA and, and its mission, and then have those skills as a executive and are board ready. And we've got great folks on the board right now that uh, are representing you extremely well, uh, have geographic uh, diversity, uh, cultural diversity, but they also come to the table with great executive experience. So if you uh, aspire to be on the board, um, even if you don't think you're ready right now, start preparing right now to uh, to join us on the board. Hone your executive and your leadership skills. And as David mentioned, you can volunteer in a chapter. We've, we've got many of our uh, folks that are on the board, many of our directors got their start in the chapters and in chapter leadership. So serve on those uh, local boards and chapters. Uh, I will also tell you it's important to be able to read a balance sheet and know the, how uh, finances work. So invest some time in gaining financial experience as well. Um, and then finally, you know, as you are moving forward with your professional career, take every opportunity possible to gain leadership experience, not only just in the chapter, but also in your business or your organization, wherever you are. And um, we're looking for folks who care, who have a passion for our mission, who have a passion for ISACA. And, and we're looking for some really great candidates that'll help uh, round out our board. And uh, this uh, board cycle, we only have one uh, opening that we forecast. So we're looking for uh, some folks that can uh, help us uh, through the years. And we will be uh, rotating the board members every year. There's a new rotation. So thanks. Yeah, thanks, Greg. And, you know, I, I want to underscore how valuable our chapters are and how how much experience and especially leadership experience. And one of the ways that we're investing this year is in more tools for chapters so that they're not doing administrative things, but they're actually doing leadership things and and having training and new forums and uh, new electronic forums to grow some of your softer skills. Um, so it's one way that you can gain some of those leadership skills that uh, Greg was just talking about. We have a question, Greg, for you from uh, Dr. Alexis. Um, how do we address the perception of a skills gap with organizational expectations of the role? It seems organizations want a jack of all trades as opposed to inviting individuals with all skills types to match them to that position. And I, you know, just before you answer, I think one of the you unique parts of the ISACA community is that many businesses don't have all these positions. So you have to be in some way a jack of all trades, but I'm, I'm interested in your pers perspective. Well, I'll, I'll address uh, first from my ISACA experience, but then I'll, um, I'll, I'll pivot to my experience in business as well, because uh, after I left government, I I went into the business world for uh, several years before I joined the CERT uh, here at Carnegie Mellon. First of all, from an ISACA standpoint and the board itself, 
we, uh, we maintain a spreadsheet of the types of skills that we expect the board to have. And then we assess our, our members as well as the candidates for those skills. And we look for gaps within the board structure to make sure that we ha have at least one person on the board with those essential skills that are required to have a high performing board. So as we are looking through all of our different candidates uh, for those positions, we are looking to fill the gaps and make sure that we have appropriate expertise in all of the major functional areas that can help make us a high performing board. Similarly, in industry, companies do this all the time. They make sure that they are identifying their, their uh, key functions, their key skill sets, and then they make sure that they have the right uh, people and the right quantities with the right skills along with a developmental plan so that if in fact you have somebody leave that you it's the next person up and, and they're ready to go and they have career development plans that are put in place. And then finally, with my experience in the military uh, here in the United States, we did it all the time. And we made sure that we had um, uh, what we called mission essential functions as well as uh, the skill sets aligned to mission essential tasks to get our mission done. Uh, I personally have come to, uh, to see uh, throughout my professional career, albeit in the military, serving in government, uh, leading a business, and, and now uh, in, in a research and development organization, and, and with my service at ISACA, that diversity in experience, diversity in culture, diversity writ large, is a strength for every organization and something that we in ISACA uh, cherish and nurture. So true, especially not only with our board, but with the staff. You know, we have 250 staff members whose full time job is to serve this global community. Uh, and, uh, you know, we look for diversity and diversity of thought. And I think, you know, inherent in this skills gap question is how do we manage the gap? in our professions that that demand that, that is not being filled and i think uh I, I think what's nice about isaka membership is that you're rubbing elbows with these different professions together so in a small business you are a jack of all trades and you do have to kind of learn about well maybe i need to be better at managing risk Maybe I need to understand what the audit process is about and why. And, and that's where you can reach out to fellow ISACA colleagues and, and learn about that spectrum, which we're now calling the digital trust professional spectrum, and, and be able to apply that. And it's certainly uh, a lot of our research has uncovered the fact that, especially in small companies, there's a big risk because they don't have all these roles in their companies like some of the bigger companies have. So it's an exciting time. There's a question, of, a specific question about hands-on training um, uh, to understand, this is from Nora, to understand uh, some of the theoretical aspects while studying. And I, I would love to understand more, Nora, some of your thoughts there. We have a lot of information on our website and it's not always easy to find and so some of it's theoretical some of it's practical some of it's you know in a white paper or it might be in a blog or in a video like this and so we are trying this year to create a taxonomy around this content so that we can deliver more value around a question like yours so that you can find it because i'm i don't know specifically where to point you to and maybe somebody on the staff will follow up with you but i I do know that we have a wealth of a body of uh, knowledge that is so valuable to this community that we need to be able to make it easier to find. Uh, Greg, did you want to add to that? Yeah, you know, we, um, we're we looking uh, at the board level. We've asked David and the executive team to, um, uh, to mature our capabilities with more multimedia capabilities uh, so that we can help folks get uh, a better training. But I will also give a shout out to uh, our, our local chapters who also, uh, many of our local chapters do some really impressive uh, mentoring 
and hands-on training seminars to help folks get that in-depth understanding well beyond just the theoretical aspect, but also some of the practical aspects of the concepts that underpin uh, the things that we are doing at ISACA with our training, education, and certification programs. So you're gonna see more in the, uh, not only in this year, but in coming years uh, online uh, through the work that David and the executive team are doing under the board's uh, direction. But also we wanna make sure that we uh, energize and reinvigorate our local chapters to give them the tools to, to help reinforce uh, so that uh, our members, regardless of where they are, uh, ISACA is going to be there for them 24 by 7 and, and meet all of their needs. Yeah, we're investing in sort of much more of a regional focus around uh, the needs of, you know, not everybody's the same in every part of the world. There are different, you know, things to shift a little bit. But that first and last mile is so important for us to get right in order to deliver value at a global basis. And that, that's really part of our global impact strategy that we talked about earlier. Well, this has been fantastic, and it's so great to see just the energy and the comments and from all over the world. It's one of my favorite parts of, of being part of ISACA is just the global reach that we have and the passion that comes from all of you. And uh, I, I know Greg is passionate about this, but I just want to share how passionate I am about the value for members around the world. It's really become an important uh, part of what we're thinking about strategically is what's in it for members where uh, when when we start to do these activities that we're starting off. And I'm so excited about 2022. I'm glad to see 2021 in the rearview mirror. And uh, and so that'll be my closing remark. And Greg, uh, take it. Take us home. Well, thanks very much, uh, David. And thanks, everybody, for joining us in this very brief conversation today. Um, we're really excited uh, as a board with the improvements that we are uh, working with uh, David and the team on to better serve our members. And I want to share our commitment to serve you, our, our fellow uh, members, and, and we're always looking uh, forward to your feedback. So if there's something that you think we're missing, let us know, because ultimately we're all part of that community of digital trust and we look forward to our next conversation with you.